Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about my fall TBR or really a fall pile of possibilities. <laughs> y'all so there are so many great books that I want to finish reading by the end of the year a lot of these are on my 23 for 2023 and I need to get some more of these read or the hubs is gonna roast me to no end we're gonna do a video where he wraps up kind of like the books that I have read and haven't read and he I think I might even say hey what do you think this is about we're gonna do a whole thing okay I got a couple things I did ask you guys by the way what videos you want to see with the hubs I have put something in my community tab. A lot of y'all gave some great ideas. Found like a whole Q&A thing. I'm excited. We're going to do it. So, uh, yeah, there'll be some things coming in the last part of this year. I don't know if I'm going to save some of it for Vlogmas. I don't know. We may do a Q&A again. Who knows? There are There's already a Hubs Q&A on my channel. But anyway, <laughs> without further ado, let's talk about the books that I want to try to get to possibly by the end of this year okay first on the list is carved in stone by elizabeth camden this is book one in the blackstone legacy series i have ne never read elizabeth camden a lot of y'all have read her and really enjoyed her this is a christian historical fiction and i'm sure it's got romance or something in it her gilded world holds a deeply hidden secret after years of tragedy gwen now lives a quiet life as a botanist in new york at a at a new york college she largely ignores her status as heiress to the infamous blackstone dynasty and hopes to keep her family's heartbreaking scandal behind her uh-oh uh, patrick o'neill survived a hard scrabble youth to become a lawyer for the downtrodden irish immigrants in his community he's proud of his work even though he struggles to afford his ramshackle law office all that changes when he accepts a case that is sure to emphasize the Blackstone's legacy of greed and corruption by resurrecting a 30-year-old mystery. It sounds really interesting. It's on my 23 books for the year. That's why it's on this list. Hopefully, I can get to it. Next is In a Far-Off Land by Stephanie Lansdom. I've heard this is wonderful. I think it has some crazy stuff going on okay this is a christian historical fiction set in the great depression in the midwest our main character minerva runs away to hollywood she's determined to make it big and save her family farm beauty and moxie don't pay the bills in tinseltown and she's caught in a downward spiral of poverty depression and compromise finally she's about to sign with a major studio instead she wakes up to a next uh, uh oh instead she wakes up next to a dead film star and is on the run for a murder she didn't commit how did i miss this I need to read this. Only two unwilling men, Oscar, a Mexican gardener in danger of dep deportation, and Max, a too handsome agent battling his own demons, can help Mina escape corrupt police on the t on the take in the studio big shots trying to frame her. Honey, need to read this. I'm more excited about this. Okay, this might need to be October. Let's just, I mean, first off the cover, the 20s vibe. I'm here for this. Okay. Look at me rereading the synopsis and be like, okay, it's like I got a brand new book. <laughs> Uh, anyway then we got if you were if if you were if i were you by lynn austin okay i did read the christmas book tied to this and i can tell you half of what happened in there so i guess i wasn't spoiled anyway <laughs> now that it's time to read this i can tell you um uh, but <laughs> this is a dual timeline Christian historical fiction, and it is 1950 and 1940. In the wake of the war, Audrey Clarkson leaves her manor house in England for a fresh start in America with her young son. As a widowed war bride, Audrey needs the support of her American in-laws, whom she never met. But she arrives to find that her longtime friend, Eve Dawson, has been impersonating her for the past four years. Unraveling, oh, I do remember a little bit about that. Okay. Unraveling this deception will force Audrey and Eve's secrets and the complicated history of their friendship to the surface. And then in 1940, 10 years prior to this, Eve and Audrey have been different, as different as two friends can be since the day they met, where Eve's mother served as a lady's maid for Audrey's mother. As young women, those differences force them apart until the threat of Nazi invasion and war bring them back together. The impersonating part, I'm here for this. I need to know. I need to know. I probably listen to this on audio. But I do have a physical copy, so well, these these are definitely on the twenty three books for twenty twenty three. These last two and this one, uh, never let go, Elizabeth Goddard. This is book one in the Uncommon Justice series. I did read one Elizabeth Goddard before, and I didn't love it. I gave it three stars. So hopefully, I enjoy this one more. But this is the case may be cold, but things are about to heat up. <laughs> I said a rough country when I said that. Forensic genealogist Willow Anderson is following in her late grandfather's footsteps in her quest for answers about a baby abducted from a hospital more than 20 years ago. When someone makes an attempt on Willow's life to keep her from discovering the truth, help will come from an unexpected source. Ex-FBI agent and Willow's ex-flame, Austin McCade, readily offers to protect the woman he never should have let get away. 
Together, they'll follow where the clues lead them, even if it means Austin must face the past he's risked. He spent so much of his life trying to forget and put Willow's tender heart at risk. A, a Christian romantic suspense. I'm here for it. And this one is not on my 23 books for 2023, but I need to get to it. It's on my five-star predictions, okay? So we book two in the Hawthorne house, a, an elegant facade, Christiane Hunter. I'm not gonna read the synopsis for this since it's book two, but if you haven't read the first book, A Noble Masquerade by Christiane Hunter, phenomenal get five stars the humor just everything about this the series has been great so far so i can't wait for wait for book two i've heard nothing but good things it's definitely on the list okay i've got another one that's on my five star predictions okay and that is the sea before us sunrise at normandy book one sarah sundan i know this is gonna be good sarah sundan she never disappoints i've only read one of her books what am i saying but again i don't think she ever disappoints right uh so many y'all say this but um this says in 1944 american naval officer Lieutenant Wyatt Paxson arrives in London to prepare for the Allied invasion of France. He works closely with Dorothy Fairfax, a Wren, quote, in the Woman's Royal Navy Service, who pieces together re re reconnaissance, <laughs> okay, I almost said Renaissance, re reconnaissance photographs with holiday snapshots of France, including those of her family's summer home, in order to create accurate maps of Normandy. Um, maps that Wyatt turns into naval bombardment plans for D-Day. The two spend concentrated time together in the pressure cooker of war. Their deepening friendship threatens to turn into something more. But both of them have too much to lose to give into love. We here. I know a lot of these are not autumnal. I'm sorry. But <laughs> normally I try to pick fall reads for like the season. And I probably will read some. But um yeah this is for the uh gotta get these red type thing <laughs> the sisters of seaview by julie classen this is on my list because i did sign up to review book two that comes out in december so i need to get this done before that so this is book one in on devonshire shores series i love the cover we've already talked about this a little bit but but this follows two sisters okay when their father's death leaves them impoverished sarah summers and her genteel sisters fear they will be forced to sell the house and separate to earn livelihoods as governess governesses or companions determined to stay together sarah convinces them to open their seaside home to guests and to make ends meet and provide for their ailing mother instead of the elderly invalids they expect to receive however they find themselves hosting eligible gentlemen uh-oh <laughs> i need to know about this uh sarah is soon torn between a growing attraction to a mysterious Scottish widower in duty to her family. I keep forgetting there's a Scottish man in this. Okay. Um, Viola Summers, that's the other sister, wears a veil to cover her scar. When vo forced to choose between helping in her family's new guest home and earning money to hire a maid to do her share, she chooses the latter. Reluctantly agrees to read to some of the Sidmouth's most in many invalids preferring the company of a few elders with failing eyesight to the fashionable guest staying in her home. But when her first client turns out to be wounded, off, a wounded officer in his 30s, she soon wishes that she had chosen it differently. Her new situation exposes her scars, visible and those hidden deep within, and her cloistered heart will never be the same. Honey, we got some romance in this. I need to know book is on the 23 books for 2023 that Blake picked and that is another romantic suspense by Lynn H. Blackburn Unknown Threat book one in the Defend and Protect series. I've never read Lynn H. Blackburn except I think there was in uh yeah in Targeted that novella series I read there was like a little novella so that's all I've read by her but um this says U.S. Secret Service agent Luke Powell is lucky to be alive three of his fellow agents have died in unusual circumstances in the past 10 weeks he is devastated by the loss of his friends and colleagues and his inability to locate the killer feels like a personal failure. He and his team are experts at shielding others, but now the protectors are in need of protection. FBI Special Agent Faith Malone is driven to succeed and confident in her ability to solve every case that she's assigned. She's been put in charge of the investigation into unprecedented attacks. And with Luke's life in danger, the stakes have never been higher. But it's hard to know how to fight back when you don't know who the enemy is. Another Christian romantic suspense that I'm here for. Seaside Wonder by Melissa Tagg. This is book two in the Mirror Harbor series. I'm not going to read the synopsis because it's book two, but I love book one. The Christian, clean romance. I need to know all the things in book two. Okay, I've heard it's even better in that cover. I mean, look at this. <laughs> We'd love to see it. Um, now I've got... That ain't good. We're back in business. All right, then I've got A Heart Adrift. Woo, that's, that's bright. Okay, we're back. Uh, a Heart Adrift 
by Laura France. This is also on the 23 books for 2023. I love Laura France. Anything she writes, hey, I'm here. Um, this is too bright. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what I've done. Y'all, let me try to make a video. Uh, that's better, I guess. Anyway, this book is a Christian historical romance, and I'm here. It's set in 1755, and the threat of war with France looms over colonial York in Virginia. Chocolatier Esme Shaw is fighting her own battle of the heart. Having reached her 28th birthday, she's reconciled to life alone after a decade-old failed love affair from which she's never quite recovered. But she longs to find something worthwhile to do with her life. Captain Henry Lennox has returned to port after a lengthy absence, intent on completing the lighthouse in the dangerous Chesapeake Bay, a dream he once shared with Esme. But when the colonial government asks him to lead a secret naval expedition against the French, his future is plunged into uncertainty. Can, can Esme and Henry's shared vision and dedication to the colonial cause heal the wounds of the past and reunite them? Immediately, yes. Yeah, like, it just... I love this cover. It sounds like a great story. A, a journey here. So it looks like we got a ship. I didn't know. This one is also on my 23 for 2023. I am concerned because I tried to read one of Amanda Dyke's books before y'all and I got three and a half stars. It was really hard for me to understand. So I'm hoping this one is not. But if it fall, if fall, I'm going to give it a chance. Okay, I pre-ordered it. And, um, you know, it's just... It's one of them things, she does have very flowery writing. And what I understood, I really liked, but there was, I, I struggled. It was, uh, The Stars A Lot was the one I tried to read and I struggled with. So please let me know if you think this would be hard for me if I struggled with that one. Please let me know. Either way, I'm gonna try to read it. Uh, this is Dual Timeline in 1807 and 1904, and this is a Christian historical fiction. And it says, when a baby is discovered floating in a basket along the quiet canals of Venice, a guild of artisans take, or artisans, I've used like that, take him in and raise him as a son, skilled in each of their trades. That sounds like a great storyline to me. I like that kind of stuff, so maybe it'd be okay. Uh, although the boy, Sebastian Trovato, has wrestled with questions of his origin, it isn't until a woman washes ashore on his lagoon island that answers begin to emerge. <sighs> Sorry, my voice, I'm losing it. It's the third video I filmed in a row. 1904, <laughs> Daniel Goodman is given a fresh start in life as the century turns. Going to redeem a past laden with regrets, he is sent on an assignment from California to Venice to procure and translate a rare book. There he discovers a city of colliding hope and decay, much like his own life and a mystery wrapped in the pages of that filigree covered volume with the help of Victoria, a bookshop keeper he finds himself in a web of shadows secrets and discoveries carefully kept within the stones and canals of the ancient city and the mystery of the man whose story the book does not finish sebastian Trov trovato so it sounds like the 1904 timeline tells the story of the guy in 1807 so this does sound really good though we'll see y'all let me know if you've read it if you think it's easier, easy to understand, let me know. The next book is also on my list. Okay, this is probably an October read. I don't know. We'll see. October or November. It probably needs to be October. But The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This is a secular... I don't even know what you call it. <laughs> is it suspense or something? I don't know. Um, <laughs> mystery, suspense. I don't know. Uh, it says... I think it's mystery. Yeah, that's right. Maybe both. But it says Evelyn Hardcastle will be murdered at 11 p.m. There are eight days, eight witnesses for you to inhabit. We will only let you escape once you understand. Once you tell us the name of the killer. Understood? Then let's begin. It says at a masquerade ball thrown by her parents at their English country house, Evelyn Hardcastle will die. She will die every day until Aiden Bishop can identify who murdered her and stop the killer. At the beginning of each day, Aiden wakes up at Bleak, Bleak Heath House in the body of a different guest of the gala he attended the night before. It's a breathlessly inventive gothic mystery that follows one man's quest to find a killer with a mind-bending temporal loop where no one can be trusted and nothing is what it seems. I need to know that Christy and Lindsay Lemus read this and they loved it. So I need to know. A Holly too, I think, read this as well. Sorry if I'm wrong. I think so though. Um, that's on my list. Then uh, this last one is definitely on my list. Um, we here again, so we meet again. <laughs> a thousand heartbeats, Kira Cass. 
I don't know what it is. I didn't read it in August. It was my, on my TBR. And uh, it's a YA fantasy, right? Yeah. I love this cover. I mean, look at this. I love this. I will be reading it, but it's like over 500 pages and I just need to find the time. Blake will get me if I don't read this, y'all. This was his favorite cover. I need to read this. He'll be like, why did you not do this? <laughs> why, man? Why did you not do this? Um, that's it. Now, I will say, this is not like a full list because it doesn't include any Christmas books I may read, of course, at the end of the year or any books for review that I have signed up to review, like through NetGalley or uh, with Bethany House and Ravel. So it just depends. But these are the ones that I have on my shelves that I'm interested in picking from and for the 23 books I need to read this year. I have so far, I'll tell you right now, I have so far, I've got me a little thing here so those i've colored are the ones i've read so this is 25 books because i had two extras so i've read 12 books i've read on this list so far out of 25 because uh we can't count um and i i just added it on the list anyway um <laughs> we had 24 in the video blake picked so i guess 11 of the ones he has picked at fall and life flight are the other two i'm reading this month so if i can get if i can just check them out hey <laughs> there's two more you know um, all the lost places, if I were you, I mean, all these I mentioned are on here. So, here's your little, there you go. <laughs> there it is. You can pause. But, that's the ones. Hopefully, I get to a lot of these. I know I ain't going to probably fill all that out. But, again, uh, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, I know I probably won't read all of them, but I don't even care. I just want to try to read what I can. And whenever I'm in the mood for it, no pressure. Again, I've hit my reading goal for the year. I've hit a lot of goals for this year. The end of the year, it is what it is. If, if I read them good, if I don't, it's fine. So, uh, but these are in the possibility pile. And uh, yeah, let me know what ones that you think I need to start with first. All that good stuff. If you've read any of these, let's just chat in the comments as usual down below. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what's on your fall TBR. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, y'all.